Hey Deckers, every month Valve releases the most played games on the Steam Deck by the number of hours played. So we put together our own Steam Deck gameplay to give you the best insights of performance as well as some extra stats. So let's get started. In at number 20, down 8 places, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Geralt of Rivia returns in this expansive world teeming with politics, intrigue and monstrous threats. Depending on your settings, we'll get between 30 and 40 frames per second, looking absolutely gorgeous on the Steam Deck screen. Check out our best settings on the channel. In at number 19, down two places from last month, we have Hades. Embark on a mythological escape from the underworld, battling through a pantheon of Greek gods. Experience a story where every failure only strengthens your resolve and unravels more of this enigmatic tale. Perfect 60 frames per second, solid on this one, and a good 4 hours battery life. We'll keep you coming back for more to try and escape hell. In at number 18, down 7 places, we have the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. In the heart of Tamriel, you are the Dragonborn, foretold to combat Alduin, the dragon set to destroy the world. This is running absolutely superbly on Steam Deck as you would imagine for such an older title, but managing to run 60 plus frames per second on medium graphics will get you around 2 hours gameplay. Also down 8 places at number 17 we have Fallout 4. Emerging from the safety of Vault 111, confront a world scarred by nuclear fallout, form alliances, establish settlements and navigate the moral ambiguities of the new age. Another title running at a pretty much perfect 60 frames per second here on the Steam Deck and will get you around an hour and a half battery life. But if you do want to go up to the high settings you will need to cap around the 40 frames per second mark. But it does play fantastically well and yes mods do work. Holding firm at number 16 we have Slay the Spire. Strategize and adapt in this hybrid of a card battler and roguelike. Every climb promises unique challenges urging you to craft the perfect deck to ascend the track for a spire. Running at a perfect 60 frames per second will net you around 4 to 5 hours gameplay on this one as it can be also capped at around the 10 watt range. Down 7 places we have Brotato coming in at number 15. Unearth the humour and peril of Brotato's journey as our multi-armed protagonist tackles extraterrestrial challenges blending bullet hell action with moments of comedic brilliance. Another very easy to play title here with a full 60 frames per second at the maxed out settings and we've got about 3 to 4 hours battery life in this one especially if you cap it at 10 watts as well. At one place at 14 we have Hogwarts Legacy, a tale set centuries before the boy who lived unravel the tapestry of magic, mystery and a hidden power that can change the course of the wizarding world. Anywhere between 30 and 50 frames per second for the most part in this one you still get some dips into the 30s in the major town and in some of the Hogwarts grounds with some of the battles as well but a good solid 30 to 40 frames per second 90% of the time but we will only get around an hour and a half game time. At number 13 holding firm we have the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Plunge into the disturbing mind of Isaac confronting fears and nightmares in a roguelike world where the line between reality and delusion blurs. So performant this one at 60 frames per second you are going to be looking at around 5 hours gameplay as it's only using around 8 watts. Down a huge 9 places into the blue is Dave the Diver. Dave's dual life is as unpredictable as it is engaging. Dive into the abyss seeking treasures and then master the culinary arts of a sushi by moonlight. Best capped at 30 frames per second to get the most out of this one so you get a good 3-4 to four hours gameplay and you won't miss the extra frames in this one as you'll be mostly trying to survive in the deep. At number 11 down another 5 places from last month is Grand Theft Auto 5. We've been playing around with our settings and we'll have a new guide for this soon as you'll see we can get a pretty solid 60 frames per second. The streets of Los Santos come alive with three protagonists weaving through a complex tapestry of crime, ambition and the relentless pursuit of the almighty dollar. At number 10 down three places we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Join Arthur Morgan in a poignant tale of loyalty, sacrifice and the undying spirit of the Wild West. Every gunfight and decision paints the legacy of the Vanderlind gang. As you can see from our most recent footage here, it's pushing a lot better at 40 to 50 frames per second, 
Again, I think it's about time we updated our guide from this one, although our previous guide will still net you a decent 40 to 50 frames per second solid. At number 9, down 4 places, we have Vampire Survivors. A relentless dance with death, each sunset brings newer horrors. But with every run you gather might, hoping to outlast the encroaching darkness. Vampire Survivors has been in our top games ever since it's released, with easy gameplay at 60 frames per second, which will get a bit harder as you get deeper into the levels, but a good 3-4 to four hours gameplay on battery on this one. Making it back into our charts after a month out is No Man's Sky, charred a course across infinite cosmos, from terraforming planets to trading with interstellar factions, the universe is yours to discover and define. With all the expansions, No Man's Sky keeps bringing people back, and with the best settings, you're going to get around 40 frames per second solid in pretty much all situations on the Steam Deck, but only around an hour and a half to two hours gameplay. New entry at number 7 of Sea of Stars. A love letter to classic RPGs, Sea of Stars intertwines destiny and free will in a universe brimming with lore and celestial wonder. This is performing absolutely perfectly on Steam Deck at 60 frames per second, netting you a good 4 hours gameplay, and we'll have a full gameplay guide of this on the channel soon, so you'll really get a good feel for the game. At number 6 down 2 places is Stardew Valley. This has been in the top games ever since they started the count, and you can see why with the perfect 60 frames per second, and if you cap this at 8 watts, you're going to be getting a good 5-6 to six hours gameplay as well, where you can explore the mysteries beneath Stardew Valley, as well as all of its farming fun and mysteries in town. At number 5, up a huge 9 places, is Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. Pilot your custom mech through urban war zones, defining your combat style through nuanced customization and strategic battlefield prowess. This has fantastic performance on Steam Deck with dips into 30s in some of the Sandstorm tense maps. But as you can see here, we're pushing a good 40 to 50 frames per second in boss fights, and that's where it counts. Dropping out of the top three for the first time in months is Elden Ring. The tarnished, driven by Elden Ring's allure, seeks to become an Elden Lord. Venture through an epic tale of power and decay in a fractured world. Still pushing a fantastic 30 to 40 frames per second on medium settings, this is still looking and performing fantastically on the Steam Deck but will only get you around an hour and a half to an hour and three quarters on battery. At number three, jumping a massive seven places is Cyberpunk 2077, no doubt thanks to the Phantom Liberty expansion. Navigate through neon-drenched streets of Night City and now Dogtown, where hacking, combat and choices forge your story in the heart of the cybernetic future. Best played at around 30 frames per second, we can eke out a little bit more, but Phantom Liberty still needs a little bit more tweaking, yet it still looks absolutely fantastic. Landing at number 2, a new entry of Starfield, proving once and for all that unsupported doesn't mean much as far as the Steam Deck goes, as you embark on interstellar explorations, uncovering the enigmas of cosmos and humanity's place among the stars, best played with some mods to eke out some better performance, so you will get around 30 to 40 frames per second if you follow the right mod guides, yes we have some on the channel, but it means that most people are not too worried about that performance drop and getting in their hours on the Steam Deck. Staying at number 1 this month though is Baldur's Gate 3. In a world where gods and monsters wage war, your emerging powers and moral choices shape the fate of all. Will your legacy be a beacon of hope or the harbinger of doom? Although this one does struggle, especially in Act 2 and Act 3, we can't wait for either FSR 2 or FSR 3 to finally drop so that it becomes much more playable. However, we can still get around 30 frames per second for the most part. Considering this is a huge game, being able to play at all on the Steam Deck is still a huge win. That's a wrap for this month. Let us know in the comments below which of these games you've been playing on your Steam Deck, or if it's not on the list, what are you playing? And be sure to check out our full gameplay and performance videos for each of the games featured. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.